have comparables, and he was said some of them were certain percentages of loss in value when it goes from through, you know, through the property and on the edge of the property. I'm sure if you have some summaries of, of what those were, things were, I'm sure people will be interested in because there were sure. negative impacts. That, right. We found almost universal negative impacts, or a few times where there wasn't, but the overall market indicated a negative impact. However, it's dependent on several variables, and you could well imagine. One is placement of the power line. If this power line is nipping a corner of, say, a 40-acre parcel, uh, very non-intrusive, maybe not even in the view shed, it could have as little as a 5% <coughs> overall impact to value. That's of the whole 40 acres. If that same power line was cutting diagonally, which we found in our research being the worst cut you could possibly get, from corner to corner, straight across the middle, those losses would have been up in the 30 percentile. Uh, for those who cut diagonally, or bisect we call it, those losses are ranging between uh, between 15 to 25 percent, depending again on a lot of variables. When it goes right in front of the property, in other words, you have to access under it all the time, that depending on the use of the property could be as low as 10 or 15 percent, it could be as high as 25 or 30. It depends on the use of the property as well. And running down the fence line, either the back quarter fence line or the side quarter fence line, that typically would be ranging somewhere between 10 to 12 percent up to 22 percent. Again, depending on the view shed, depending how obvious it is, and the use of the property. So those are some general guidelines you can start thinking of on the impact of the uh, power line. It also depends, there's another variable in all of this, and that is what we call the footprint of the power line. How big is the tower? How dominant is this tower in the big shed? In the, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Um, back to the studies that he was talking about. Yeah. Have there been any studies about the um, health risks? Yes. Animals? There have. We've researched that too. Let me caution you on this. The uh, courts of Wisconsin will not consider health risks as a uh, diminution of value unless you can prove that the market believes it and acts on it. All right. Uh, there's some fine lines you have to be careful of. What we have done is we have incorporated all of that in the impact value. Now, when you interview and you question the people, the buyers or the sellers, why the difference in value, quite often that will come up. And it's not just for humans, by the way. There's a big concern over animal husbandry, uh, I did a farm up in your neck of the woods, actually your partner's neck of the woods, up in Douglas County, that was a breeding farm for Tennessee walkers, special breed, that they were breeding them short, because she believed that mostly older women are buying the horses and they wanted the shorter horse. Um, and I'm a horse guy, so I really like that. <laughs> okay. But there was a, a we did a, quite a bit of an investigation on the impact of power lines and horse breeding and actually have found some very interesting uh, peculiarities that have come out of that. And the horse breeders, then we interviewed the horse breeders and their opinions, and universally they were also against anything that could possibly screw up their process. So they would look upon a horse farm if that was its use, and its highest and best use, with a very less desire because of the presence of a high voltage transmission line if it was for breeding purposes. How about trout streams? Trout streams. Well, now you're talking aesthetics and desirability. But let me ask you a question. We'll go right back to the original example. You have a trout stream that is lined with woods on both sides, and it's plentiful with the trout. And now, let's say one side is denuded about 150 feet wide, but you still have the trout stream. How attractive is that? Not very. And again, that's an aesthetic, and aesthetic plays a big part of property value. When you purchase a property, there's reasons why you purchase a property. Aesthetics is a big one. That impacts tourism, too. Yes, it does. Absolutely. And water quality. I'm not sure about the water quality. I'm not, I'm not qualified to answer that. I've never even investigated that. My specialty is property value. So, yeah. I have property in Northern Cross County. Which is on the Black River, which is designated as a viable scenic river. 
At this color line, it's going to go at less than a quarter of a mile on that river. Also, the line is designated for over an Indian historical site that's documented with historical society in La Crosse. And there's also endangered species of trees, which are the butternut tree. I don't know how so much documentation is done on that, but there are some of these trees in there, and that's a, a species that's dying. First of all, I would, I would work with your town, work with your local government, and make sure that all, and work with specialists and start documenting these things and making this evident. Now, don't wait until the scoping process, which is after the application is on there. Well, when I get the documentation, I should be sending it to the PSC then, right away? Or what do um, I do with the documentation? Well, what we did, we have a doc, our town has a document that we've been sharing with other documents. I'd be happy to send anybody here. You can just come. It's in that newsletter. Everyone needs to leave me with a copy of the newsletter, which is over on Sol's newsletter. It has a lot of good information, questions that people are asking. There are forms that can be filled out back here that are also will promote this public quest. That's very important. Please take the time to write those. But there's also the town of Stark has a website. You can just contact information there for me. Just type in Stark Town, Wisconsin. You'll get us. Follow the link, and, and I'll be happy to send these resolutions that we are referring to them to other towns that help help you itemize what your concerns are. And those are signed, approved by the uh, board, become a document that goes to the Public Service Commission and to the developer documenting your concerns and the impacts with your property value and itemizing things. Uh, this is a very good thing to do from a negotiation perspective because you are, you are going on record as Curtis talked out. They explain the impacts we pretty much know on, on the negative side. Right? I mean, we can make a list of it's very unlikely that there's going to be a net gain. So any township that's looking at this project is looking at sacrifices. And so itemizing what those sacrifices are and going on record saying that we are asking for a discussion of the needs, the justifications for the sacrifices that we would be making in a proper, full, informative context to not be asked to go told where only one of the options of the proposal Right? Every, every transmission project that is proposed to the Public Service Commission of Wisconsin has to have, just like a regular business proposal, you have to say, well, you've got to do this, you can do this, or you can do this. You do cost-benefit analysis of several options. Okay? And one of the options, which we know dearly as the CapEx 2020 and the Badger Cooley, are high-voltage transmission options. But the developers, in both cases, will be submitting low-voltage solutions along with that application. So that, I'm a citizen, and I've heard uh, many of my friends in other townships have agreed, is that if I go to a public open house meeting, um, I want to know what all the options are. I want to see the corridors for the low-voltage option. I want to see what places they, what lines would be upgraded for that. So there's a very narrow kind of way that we are being defined, that we can open up by taking that position. Yeah. Well, we were just, we were just at the meeting about the low voltage option, and they said that um, that the low voltage option isn't presented because it has all these, it doesn't have all the benefits of the high voltage oh. option, which the high voltage option gives us renewables. I mean, we get access to renewables. And we said, what renewables? Tell us what renewables. Well, the market is there. The renewable, it's not actually, they haven't actually built those <coughs> wind towers yet, is what one guy told us. It's just, it's not this actually is there. Good, this is a very, I am saying response. This is a very good direction, though, that is opening up, because they're saying, first of all, acknowledging that the low voltage option is there. Okay? Second of all, that it has separate kinds of benefits. Right? The door is opening. Yes? Um, I have a similar question. This line would give us access to wind turbine energy equipment and the Dakotas. 